As part of the final year of my game's development degree, we had to complete a final year project. This meant selecting a topic to do some research on and to write up a report detailing this research. Alongside this research, you had to develop an application or a video game. Obviously, as I was studying games development, I opted to make a game, but I still had to choose what to research. I spent several days racking my brain around thinking of what would be cool or interesting to do. I looked at things like procedural generation and artificial intelligence, and then even into accessibility features. I had to think to myself though, what is something unique and new that I could work on? My brainstorming eventually led me to looking into Twitch integration. This is a feature that was implemented into several indie games and was looking to be a new unique way to interact with video games. And games like Punch Club, Cluster Truck and Choice Chamber are a few to name and they were somewhat successful in doing this Twitch integration. Even Vermintide 2 also had some Twitch integration features. But what were these games actually accomplishing? They took the increasingly popular medium of watching games online and attempted to transform it from a passive experience to an active one, making viewers into players and those viewers were then more invested in what they were seeing on screen. Then there are clear business benefits. The more people that interact with your game, then in theory, the more sales you could receive. Most of these games make use of a voting system. Choices come in and the viewers on Twitch put in their votes. Once the votes are accumulated, the winning decision is output into the game. Viewers get to watch as their choices impact the player's experience they are watching on the screens. After looking into Twitch integration more, I made my decision that this was what I wanted to work on. But before committing myself 100%, I wanted to make a prototype to ensure it was possible. I read through the Twitch IRC documentation watched videos on how to build Twitch chatbots and eventually built my own Unity slash Twitch integrated demo. It worked pretty well and the code to do so was actually quite simple. This demo was what I used to create the Twitch integration tutorial on my channel. So if that is something you're interested in making, make sure to check that video out. At this stage, things were looking pretty good. I confirmed that I was able to go ahead and build a game around the concept of Twitch integration and even had a working prototype of the Twitch integration in play. Next up, I had to decide on what type of game I was going to build this around. Deciding on what type of game would work well with Twitch integration was tough. Some of my first thoughts were about building a walking simulator that would allow Twitch viewers to decide on dialogue choices. Honestly, this was probably a better option than what I ended up choosing, but for some reason I just decided against this. Instead, at this point in time I had a significant interest in top-down shooters, twin stick shooters and bullet hell games. I really wanted to make a game like these. It didn't even make sense to me. These are typically fast paced games and Twitch integration was slow input, not to mention the stream delay. Who cares about logic and reason though? I wanted to make a twin stick shooter and I would find a way to make it work. In fact, I made it a part of the research. Can Twitch integration work in a game genre where it seems incompatible from the outset? I quickly got to work designing the game getting carried away thinking that I would be able to make a huge intricate game like Dead Nation or Enter the Gungeon, but reality quickly smacked me in the face. I've never made a game before and I sure as hell don't have time to make a game of the quality and size as those games. So I had written up this huge design document that I had to now rip to shreds and narrow down to its core. What are the core game mechanics and what other games have done something like this before? Now that I had the design and theory of the game worked out, it was time to get into the nitty gritty of the project, the development. This project was super interesting to complete. I was able to learn so much in the process. I furthered my understanding of moving and rotating characters in a 3D and 2D space. I had to look into game design choices, such as does the ship, who you control in the game, need to face the direction you're shooting, or is there a way that you can shoot in a different direction from that? The best way I discovered for doing this in Neon Trials was through the use of an RO indicator. The RO basically goes around the player and shows them what direction they're trying to shoot. All our games do this differently because you play as a human and you can run backwards and face the direction you're shooting in. There are so many small weird things to think about like this when making a game that you don't necessarily think about when you're playing games and then you don't see them until you're actually in there making it for yourself. The core mechanics of the player didn't take too long to develop either. The movement, rotation and shooting were developed pretty early on, and the AI development was the next thing after that. This was probably the biggest stumbling block that was faced during development. It's pretty simple to create an object and make it move towards your player, 
but when you have multiple objects in the scene, they overlap each other and eventually join together. This is due to them taking the optimal path towards the player. So, to solve this, I was led towards investigating flocking behaviors. Flocking behaviors is taken from the behavior birds exhibit when flying together, only we implement this behavior into our AI. I didn't actually need to implement this fully into the game, but I did use part of flocking behaviors to create my AI, and that was the separation rule. All of the AI game objects are aware of each other and will use this awareness to stay apart from each other. This is actually what I showcased in my AI separation tutorial. The script is a more simpler version of what I had implemented into Neon Trials, but the main difference is that Neon Trials uses a dynamic script that can keep track of new AI coming into and leaving the game. Creating the AI was probably the most interesting part of development too, and where I was able to learn the most. Time was getting short as the year pressed on. I had the core of the game working, but I still had not started development on the Twitch gameplay systems. I knew how to integrate with Twitch, but I had not yet created the polling system that allowed the viewers to vote and impact the game. I had to decide on what viewers could vote on. They can spawn a boss, spawn weapons, lives, an AI companion, just to name some. I developed code that would look at a list of various options for the viewers to vote on, and then select one of these at random, and then select another, but they wouldn't select the same thing twice. It then starts a timer and allows the voting to begin. Viewers can input their votes and the game will start counting them up. Once the timer has expired, the choice with the most votes will be acted out in the game and the process repeats itself. It is a fairly basic system and did not require too much effort to implement. Once the Twitch voting system was finished, I had to go back through the entire project tidying up loose hands and adding in some final touches. This included things like the main menu in the game, ironing out bugs, adding in Twitch mode and non-Twitch modes. Once this was completed, the game was finished. Next up was presenting the game as the final requirement for the project. I had to set up the project for presentation for university. This meant going in and ensuring that everything worked fine the day before the presentation was due. When doing this, an issue was quickly discovered. The Twitch integration had stopped working. This was due to a firewall protection blocking access to the correct ports. Luckily, I had my full code available with me and I quickly logged in and booted up my Unity project. The solution was not too difficult. The port I was using had been restricted and with some quick research and trial and error, I was able to get things up and running on another port. That was it, the project was complete, for the presentation at least. Once the presentation was over, I decided to have another look over what I had created again. I had put a lot of work into this project and thought it would be a good idea to share it with others. So with one last look through the game, I decided to upload it onto itch.io. I chose itch.io as the platform because it is more friendly to student projects and indie games than Steam is. The audience seemed to know what to expect with some of the available games. I also didn't want to be one of those people who spam Steam with garbage games. Oh, that's right. I need to mention the game that I made. It's not very good. In fact, it's probably terrible, but that doesn't matter because I made a game. I got in there and worked through the bullshit and drudgery and came out the other side much more informed on what it takes to create a game. And that's the point, you probably won't make something good the first time you make a game. And that's okay, most people don't. The goal in the beginning should be to make something, anything at all, because when you do and everything is finished you'll realise how much you didn't know and how much you've learned through the process. Making games is an exciting and wonderful thing and it's okay to make bad games, in fact I'd say it's a requirement. I'm not afraid of